empires on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. This is Leanne McAdoo for InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here with Dr. Edward Group, master herbologist and chief formulator behind the InfoWars Life products. Dr. Group, what have you been hearing from women who've started taking super female vitality? You know, we've heard the reviews and feedback from super male vitality from emails to even excited callers on the radio. Now, the answer for women is here. A new formulation specifically designed for the female body, super female vitality delivers 10 key herbs that work synergistically to revitalize the unique biology of women. I'm so glad that you guys made this for women. When he brought me home the bottle of Super Female, I had tons of energy, tons of motivation, a lot of drive. My husband thinks I've been in a better mood. Our relationship, all I can say is it's a lot better now. I've just started taking Super Female Vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. Supplies are limited, so secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or dial 1-888-253-3139. You are listening to an InfoWars.com Frontline Report. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I have Daniel Estelin, tireless reporter about the Bilderberg Group. He's had many inside sources. We're going to have questions uh, for Daniel from our callers about Bilderberg. We also want to find out if he's uh, got any new information. He released uh, seven items that he believed from his insider sources were going to be on the agenda. So we want to see if he has any more information about that. And we're going to talk to him also about uh, China and uh, the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Square because China is a key player in the globalist taking over the industrialized base of the West and moving it to China where they can more easily control it. But before we do, I want to put in our pitch here because this is what pays for us going to these different places, whether we're going to Copenhagen to cover Bilderberg or whether we're going to cover the protests in Nevada. What pays for those trips, what pays for our ongoing expenses here as a media operation are the products that we sell. And uh, it's something that helps you as well as helping our organization. Now, as We've talked about many times the globalists are digging in. Alex has repeatedly said on the show that they're moving up their end game. The day is coming where they're going to take over the food supply, where they're going to contaminate the food supply to the extent that you won't be able to find anything to eat 
We have a very fragile infrastructure here. It doesn't take much to collapse that. The Patriots everywhere are getting prepared. They're doing it with MyPatriotSupply.com, which offers high-quality survival gear and is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. It's delicious, easy to prepare, put together with GMO-free crops, storable for up to 25 years. My Patriot Supply has developed space-saving, secure food storage bins, Unlike the flimsy plastic pails that you find almost anywhere else, visit MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today for special offers. That's MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. The globalists are counting on you to be unprepared. So fight back. Get prepared at MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today. Now, we want to go to some callers and take their calls. But just before we do, I want to ask uh, Daniel, what do you make of these 25 years with Tiananmen Square and how the globalists, how, how Rockefeller has admired Mao and the Chinese communists, how he spoke in glowing terms of them, even after the Cultural Revolution starved millions of them, perhaps tens of millions of them, completely eviscerated the middle class, the sorts of things that we see could possibly happen with uh, contamination of our food supply by the large corporations or the kinds of uh, things that are, being, that are coming out of Bilderberg. Daniel, uh, did you want to say something about uh, China today? I wanted to, uh, because we are talking about the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Now, to most people old enough to have seen it on television, the Tiananmen Square student protest in Beijing in, in June 1989, uh, shrouded in the image of the CNN, the slowly protest of the shopping bag, dressed in white shirt and black trousers, blocking a column of tanks. Yeah. What few people realize is that Tiananmen was an early attempt by the United States intelligence to interfere in the internal affairs of People's Republic of China and also to implement what later came to be called color revolutions. You could also call them made in America coups. Similar color revolutions were later on by Washington and Serbia against Milosevic in Ukraine with the so-called Orange Revolution, Georgia's Rose Revolution that unseated Edward Shevardnadze, and also other geopolitical destabilizations aimed at creating Washington-friendly regime changes. It has very little to do with, you know, with popular protests it has nothing to do whatsoever with spontaneous revolutions. There's no such thing as a spontaneous revolution. It is a well-planned, very expensive revolutions or coup d'etats made in America. Yeah, that's what uh, they were talking about at Bilderberg, I'm sure. They were talking about what's going on in the Ukraine. And we've had admissions by the State Department that they have spent billions of dollars to get that started in the Ukraine. And now they're going to be spending uh, over a billion dollars. Uh, Obama has pledged that. Uh, to the Europeans that he's going to give them a billion dollars to essentially provoke a new arms race and a new Cold War. That's what's going to come out of this. I'm sure the military industrial complex is going to love that. Well, I can tell you that, you know, there's some very interesting discussions going on at the Bilderberg Conference. Now, we've talked, the last time was on the Alex Jones show, just before the meeting, that one of the agenda items, obviously, I mean, we didn't even need Bilderberg to tell us that, they were going to discuss the whole deal with Russia and the Chinese, and but the point was how to keep Putin in place and away from causing damage to the international globalist order. Now, the European and American Bilderbergers this time around, for the first time since 2002, went at each other's throats to a certain extent. Back in 2002, Jim Tucker reported it back then, they were at each other's throats for the whole thing about the war, upcoming war in, uh, uh, in Iraq. This time around, it was China and Russia. Now, the European Bilderbergs were saying to the American Bilderbergs, okay, you want us to impose sanctions? We did. And now, not only did we impose sanctions without any effect whatsoever, but the Russians and the Chinese, through the back door, made a deal. And this deal is worth $400 billion. It's an enormous gas deal. So what are we going to do now? Because in the end, if you want us to impose more sanctions, the European Bilderbergs are saying to the American Bilderbergs, it's going to hurt our economy, not you. And the Americans are saying, we need you to stay together with us because we need to hurt Putin. Now, there's some silver lining to this deal because, again, on the one hand, Bilderberg does agree. It's a nightmare scenario, China and Russia working together, and now Iran also joining the phrase. We have China, Iran, and Russia working together. It's a very difficult deal to sabotage the China-Russia gas deal because uh, the whole, the, uh, the, uh, the, you cannot get to the uh, uh, to actual pipeline because they're so far inland that you cannot they cannot be sabotaged. And needless to say, it's a deal which came in just in time for Putin. It shows, on the one hand, that Putin does have allies, you know, to seek 
to blunt Western sanctions over Ukraine. It also helps both Russia and China to assert themselves as regional powers. That said, American Bilderbergers, we don't know them by name because in the Bilderberg reports, we don't have the names. It just says American Bilderberger, European Bilderberger, member of French uh, um, political circles, and so on and so forth. What we do know is that one American Bilderberger said, or reminded the rest of the people at the meeting, that over 40 years ago, Richard Nixon and Kissinger were able to persuade China China to turn against the Soviet Union and ally with America. And so then they asked this rhetorical question. So does today's collaboration between Russia and China amount to renewal of this alliance against America? Now, what is absolutely certain, as Bilderberg has agreed, if Western banks uh, stop lending money to the Russians, to the Chinese banks will step in, will step in and lend Russians the money. Now, the Chinese badly need the natural resources which Russia has in abundance. And this gas deal obviously eases China's concern that most of its fuel supplies comes from the strategic choke point of the Straits of Malacca that Americans can close at any point if there are real hostilities between the United States and China. And this deal also enables China to move away from burning so much of its coal that pollutes the air in the Chinese city. Now, despite that, these are obvious advantages for the Chinese and the Russians. The Russians and the Chinese have have some very important differences which they need to overcome. And one of these differences is the fact that uh, Bilderbergers are convinced that the Chinese, taking advantage of Putin's predicament, drove a very hard bargain, knocking down the price, something which left the Russians with a bad taste in the mouth. Now, another thing is that the, the, the uh, the Central Asia, Russia and China, that's their uh, area of, uh, of influence. Now, the Chinese want the Russians to recognize China as the global uh, powerhouse in the economy, and the Russians want the Chinese to recognize them as the military power. So we do have these tensions which that's the Bilderbergs were talking about. Yeah. And it's interesting to note that you know, when push comes to shove, you have this enormous border between the Russians and the Chinese. On the one hand, on the one side, you have lots of natural resources of few Russians, and on the other side, you have no natural resources and lots of Chinese. And as again, as one American Bilderberger reminded everybody in the room, that many of Russia's tactical nuclear weapons are still pointing at China. So again, what we will see in the near future is that Bilderberg and Western powers and Western media are going to try to play up China against Russia, try to drive a wedge between these two countries. Countries. But I think if Putin and the Chinese governments are smart, they'll stay together they'll, because they realize that temporary gains by joining the United States are not worth long-term losses. Fascinating analysis. I, I want to give the callers a chance to ask some questions. Let's go to uh, Anthony in Florida. Anthony, do you have a question about Bilderberg for Daniel Estelin? Hello? Hello, Anthony. Do you have a question for Daniel Estelin about Bilderberg? Actually, yeah. Uh, actually, I, I have a, I have a comment. Okay. It's, um, I think that the I think that the globalists are actually becoming quite sloppy when it comes to conducting their um, their, uh, their their policies against everyone else because before they were in the shadows conducting it, and now it's, it's as if they're 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 losing their their um, their way as far as um, trying to trying to um, dictate policy. On, on well, everyone else. Well, that's interesting because certainly there's been a massive revulsion about what was the European Union and the Euro. And of course, that was by admission of Etienne d'Avignon. That was something that was planned by the Bilderberg Group. But now that people have seen how that's working, how that's been implemented against them, how they have lost their sovereignty, there's been a massive revolt against that throughout Europe. Wouldn't you say, Daniel? What we have right now, especially with the rise of, of nationalism, uh, you know, in England and France and in other parts of, of Europe, now some of that nationalism is pure fascism, that's obvious. But others, such as the case of Nigel Farage uh, with UKIP in England or, or Marie Le Pen, Marine Le Pen in France, this is not fascism at all. These are nationalism. But what we actually have, and this is something that Bilderberg and European community are very much concerned about, is we have two systems and, and going at each other. And depends on which system wins, we'll see how the world is actually is going to shape itself or play itself out in the near future. Now, one system is the monetary system, and the other one is a national credit system. Okay, now, if you're smart, 
You don't want a monetary system to run the world. You want a sovereign nation state to have their own credit system, which is the system of their currency. And of course, this is firmly stated in the United States Constitution. And of course, it was excluded by the Maastricht Treaty as a method of determining of economic and financial policies. And needless to say, what we're seeing right now, okay, in Europe is exactly this. And it's insane to belong to this kind of a group because in Europe, you don't have any kind of uh, credit system. It's all monetary system run by this banking system, which is European Central Bank, needless to say, belonging to Bilderberg and all these other organizations. There is no government, there is no nation, it's just a group of nations run by a private bank. And of course, what we're seeing right